Okay, so we're all set. Let's do this. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Pierre, your host. I hope you're all doing great this morning or this afternoon or this evening. Anyways, my friends, uh, let's uh, do like we always do. Let's go over to the computer. Let's check out really quickly what we did uh, yesterday. Well, actually, day before yesterday, because uh, day before yesterday, it was so cold in uh, the studio that when I got, got home, I just could not defrost. I mean, after several hours, I was still cold. And, uh, and yesterday, I just could not deal with coming one more time into the cold uh, dampness of my studio. Today, it's slightly warmer, but uh, still, as you can see, I'm all bundled up. It's not ideal, but anyways, we still have to get to work. So let's go over to the computer. Let's check out what we did on Monday, and we'll start our day from there. So on Monday, if I recall, we added on the shadowing and the dark magenta to our painting. And then, yes, we did the shadowing of the arms. And that basically took us uh, all, uh, all afternoon because we had to wait for the paint to dry, could not go any further. And so today, what are we going to do? We're going to tackle the main subject of our painting, and then we're going to add some second coats uh, to like the purple background and to the guy's uh, magenta, darker shade of magenta. So I'm going to just come back here very quickly. I'm going to grab my white paint because I'm going to do the background right in here of the hand. And uh, the background, I'm going to do it in white because the, the final color is going to be yellow. And I want that yellow to be nice and uh, strong. I want it to be, uh, I want it to pop out of that painting. So uh, to make sure that it's nice and resilient, I'm going to put the white background. And then we'll probably have to put two, maybe even three coats of uh, golden yellow because that is the, the color that covers the least. That's the way it goes. No matter how thick I put it on, uh, you still have to put several coats. So anyways, we're not there yet. We are right here of getting <clears throat> the white paint. I'm going to use the cap of my jar of paint as uh, I'm going to use that as, the, as my palette. There we go. I am I'm going to clean off my knife first. And I'm going to go for the motive of a virus. I didn't do it so far because I started this painting with having in my mind a virus in his hand. And then with that war in Ukraine, which is so upsetting, I didn't paint it because I wanted to stay open and see if I would be influenced into changing and painting something else. And uh, I thought a lot about it and decided I'm still, I'm going to go with my original idea. So that is what we are going to do. Uh, there are no paintings or words that can take away the grief of what's going on in Ukraine. It's a monumental tragedy. And I am looking for my compass. There we go. So I can just draw a little circle and get the right angle of what I want to do. I'm going to want that to be in here somewhere. Make this a little bit wider. I think something like this. Yep, okay, that it is a big baby that I'm drawing there. It's gonna be a big uh, 
Yeah. So, let's get the right paintbrush to start off with. What brush am I going to use? I'm going to start off maybe with this one. I'm going to work the white paint though to get it to be the right uh, texture, right consistency, so it glides on the painting. It's pretty thick. Now this entire jar of white paint uh, has been thick from the beginning. I don't know if it's because it sat on the shelf at the store for a long time or maybe just simply because of the cold. Who knows? Usually it's not quite this thick, but I have to work, work a little bit of water to get the, the right consistency of the paint, as I said, so it just glides on beautifully. I'm going to start off by doing this circle, then I'll be adding it look like a sun to a certain degree. Just keep twirling this. If I was mixing several colors, I would probably go to my camera number one and do this with you guys. But since it's just white on a white background of a palette, not really that interesting. So I'm just very quickly going to do that over here. There, I'm going to keep it kind of thick as well because I don't want this to, I want it to be nice and opaque just so that the, that the yellow paint that I put on top of it is going to be nice and intense. So let me go ahead and do this. So I am just going to just think this through one more time. Maybe I'll make this just a little bit smaller, just like that. I think I'm going to go with that instead. See if I can. Uh... And let's do that. I'm going to start with that smaller circle. There we go. Let me bring over camera number one. Get this a little bit closer so we can see more what I'm doing right here. And I'll switch over. Now, I don't have to get too close to the hand there because there will be an outline to that. There we go. Very good.
just like that. All right. A little bit wider, there we go. Step back for a second, okay. go. Just put on this white paint as thick as I can. Make sure like the yellow stands out. Go. 
Okay, so that's it for the, the background of our centerpiece. Now I'm going to put a second coat on the guy's uh, head right here. So let me come back over here. I'm going to put a second coat right here where it needs it pretty badly. So let me pull this baby back. We'll be centering down over here. Just like that. So let me make up some magenta. I have to put a second coat because I can see all the brush strokes. All the brush strokes are right there and they're pretty horrific. And it's the same with the purple. Obviously on the camera you can't really tell. But when you're standing up close or even back here and you look at the background, well, you can see right through it in many spots and you can see the paintbrush strokes. So I have to kind of get rid of all that. And that will be the end of our stream for today. Can't wait for summertime to come because uh, we'll be able to put the fan on and blow it on full blast so the paint dries faster and I can paint longer than these like mini sessions that I've been doing for the last two months. And obviously when it's way too cold, I don't even bother to come in anymore because, uh, well, I have nothing to prove anymore. After 40 years of painting, all I have to do is just make myself uh, feel good about what I'm doing. Take pleasure in it. So what is all this stuff? What am I walking on here? There we go. So this looks pretty good. What am I going to do here? Am I going to grab my chair? Yes, I think I will. I'll just grab my chair right over here and bring that here. I'm not going to touch anything right in here. I'm just going to work on this guy right there. Make sure the paint is nice and uh, thick so it's nice and opaque. But yet I want it to be fluid enough so it just kind of flows on the canvas. There we go. That looks pretty good right there. So let me just load up. Load up my camera and let's go to camera number one. Again, I don't have to get too close to the white outline there because obviously there's going to be a, an outline afterwards. So. Yes, to see all those brush strokes disappear. There we go. Very good.
go. A little swirl in there. There, very good. So what's going on here? Right there is a little bit, oh, there we go. It's because uh, there was a little bit of texture there. Okay. So, we got that guy done. All right. There we go. Okay. Now, all we have to do is our purple, second coat of purple, and I'm going to try to be careful. I'm going to try to be careful not to make it too dark. I like the way it looks now, and I want to make sure that it doesn't get any darker with that second coat. And for that, I have to keep in mind that the paint is going to darken as it dries. So I'm going to have to make it lighter than what's actually there so that when it dries, it will match more or less, more or less, what is there. So let's do that right now. Let me get the purple paint right here. And we'll be adding some white. And in this particular case, I guess I'll go over to camera number one and we can mix it together. There we go. Couldn't find my knife there for a second. So here we go. Here are the, here is the kind of situation where I usually start bitching because here you have these kind of jars of paint where the top is so narrow. How do you get the last inch of paint out of this without putting it all over your hands or whatnot? It's just so stupid compared to jars like this, which are much wider cap, where you can get the last drop of paint without having to make a mess. But with these guys, it's really a real pain in the neck, quite frankly. Okay, so I should have plenty of purple there. The purple overwhelms uh, the white paint very quickly, very easily. So, let me just wash off my knife again. You see, I have purple paint all the way to the middle of my handle just because of the narrowness of the cap to these paint jars. Really, you can tell the guys who invented this, you know, had his little drawing board obviously never painted in his life. Okay, so. And I don't mind getting paint on my hands, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't do this business or I'd be wearing little gloves, you know, like some artists do. But uh, I don't mind having paint on my hands, but it's, it's a different story when you're trying to get the last inch, especially when you see the prices of this stuff. This is like 15, 16 bucks, uh, a, a jar of, uh, you know, well, whatever, whatever. So what am I doing? I am, besides bitching, I'm getting some white paint. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to grab quite a bit of it. Maybe I'll just use my spoon here instead. 
right there because we do have quite a bit of surface to do. Last time when I put the first coat, I was lucky enough. I had just enough. So this time I'm going to make just a little more. What paintbrush am I going to use though? This one here maybe? This one looks like a nice one. Not too wide, not too narrow. This looks like I'll do the job. So let me put the cap back on to avoid getting purple paint in the white. There we go. And there we go. Wet the brush, scoop out the white paint. Again, I'm going to clean my spoon here. I like keeping my tools clean right away because if I have to come back, you know, in a few minutes or change colors, at least I know I won't be mixing all these colors together. There we go. So we got that done. There we go. So let me come over to camera number one. I'll move this back over here because I have a jar of water right down here, which is pretty handy as well. And so you see the purple, the white. So let's blend all this and keep our fingers crossed. I have a lot of water there, but it's all going to disappear as we blend everything together. And let's hope we get the, we got our quantities uh, just right. So we will end up with the right uh, hue of purple. I'm going to do this kind of slowly so it doesn't splatter purple paint all over the place. It's going to be way too thick, but I'm going to add more water as we get, as it gets blended in. Beautiful purple right there that's starting to come out. As well get another scoop of water here and then let's just kind of blend everything in so it's nice and homogeneous so we don't have any streaks and we're not going for a marble effect which does look nice I must admit but that's not what we're going for today I was hoping to not have to put a second coat of purple on and start attacking the border while the rest of the painting was drying, but as I looked at it from up close, it was obvious that it needed a second coat. I could see all the brush strokes. In some places, I could see right through to the gesso underneath. And of course, on the camera, you can't tell. And my clients, well, they don't buy by watching the internet. They buy by coming into the gallery or my studio. And that's when they decide to buy. So I cannot rely on just the camera's effects. So let me keep blending. I see there's still a lot of, little bit of white. That's okay. So we're we're getting to be a slightly lighter than what we have on our canvas, which is exactly what we wanted, right? We wanted to go light, so as it dries, it darkens. But I can still see a lot of white streaks in my paint, so I'm still going to take a few more minutes and just go back and forth and blend all this in. Question is, am I going to have enough paint to cover the whole surface of purple? Maybe I'll just add right now another scoop of water, making this nice and liquid. Since there is a first coat of purple underneath it, it's not going to be as important as if it was the first coat. So 
so I can cheat a little bit, add water to it, make this more liquid. Of course, not too liquid, of course. We do you want the pigments to not to get too diluted. But it looks like we're getting very close to something that looks pretty good. I like it. So let's bring up the camera and let's just put a little poke on this painting just to see how this color is going to look. So I'll just go right about right here. And let's just, just, let's, uh, well, hey camera, can you focus here? Thank you. Boy. So you can see it's a little bit lighter. Of course, there's the window, the shine of the window. That makes it a little more difficult to see, but anyway. So let me pull this back, offset it. I'll pull this camera back as well. And I'm going to start on this upper left-hand corner of our canvas right there. And let's get this second coat on. Yes, it's slightly lighter which is excellent. Of course, this is just the background. There's going to be a lot of details on this purple as well, so. So let me pull the camera even further back. There we go. There's no need for me to get too close to the edge, even though I am, just because there will probably be a black outline between the frame and the inside of our painting. Just like that, I'll bring the camera over to keep following what I'm doing. There we go. Again, it's not that important that I'm so tight to the top here, but it's good practice. I might as well just go to right to the edge and start heading down. Just like that. Very good. So I'll come back up here. Well, I just did one big, huge circle all the way through. Too bad it wasn't on camera, but I didn't stop on purpose since I was, I had a pretty steady hand. Oops, hold on, it's painting some paint dripping on my canvas. Right down here, I'll show it to you. Right there, you can see the paint dripping right where I don't want it to be. But fortunately, with acrylic paint, all you have to do is just grab a wet cloth and you can just wipe it off. Just like that. And boom, it's gone. That is the wonders of acrylic paint. And let's come on back up here. Where am I? 
attacking the upper right hand side of our canvas. There we go. Now, drip came because my paintbrush was, oops, what the hell? There we go. I had a little too much paint on my, on my brush. So let me bring this down here, just like that. There we go. Good. So I'm just going to come on back to this left hand side and do that part. And I'm going to grab my chair for that. Might as well be comfortable. If you're. I mean, when you're painting, I always say the same thing, but when you're painting, you want three things you want the texture and the consistency of your paint to be the right, well, consistency, the right texture. You want to have the right size paintbrush, and you want to be in a comfortable position to paint. If you can get all three of those things together, well, you know you're in for a treat, and painting is a lot of fun. But if you're lazy and you don't feel like changing paintbrushes or then uh, you then things become tedious. Then it becomes work. And painting should not be work. It should be a pleasure. It should be fun. And I know for me it is. So, let's get all this together here. There we go. So, just move this baby over a little bit. Just like that. I guess I can bring the camera over a little bit as well. Just put it off to the side so I'm not in front of the lens. I can avoid that. I would rather avoid that. Again, no need for me to go this close to the edge. It seems like I just can't help myself. There we go. What if I just do a major zoom like just to finish off the painting, just like that. Like that, I'll have some materials when I edit my little movie to make the recap. I'll have like a good close-up to finish off the, 
the painting. There we go, just like that. Look at that, what a professional. So, well, there we have it. So I guess I'll just pull back camera number one so we can have a view from both cameras, both angles. How's that look? I guess that looks okay. So obviously that's the view from camera number two. And then the view from camera number one. As we conclude today's 43 minutes of painting. And unfortunately, you've got to stop. You see, if, I, if we were in the summertime, I would have had the fan on full blast. And what we started, the white part, it would be dry. And I would be able to go in and now put the first coat of yellow. But unfortunately, well, that's the way it goes. So anyways, I want to thank you all for joining me. I hope you'll join me tomorrow. Tomorrow's Thursday. We'll be doing our stream en français. We'll be doing it in French, and uh, it's a good time for you to brush up on your, your French. Who knows, maybe you'll be coming over to France this summer now that the restrictions are a lot easier. So anyways, I want to thank you very much. I'm going to leave you, like usual, with two things. I'm going to leave you with my schedule and by saying, ciao mes amis.